Roderick's family is still not sure how he got the virus. His sister says he was practicing social distancing, and that's just one more reason everyone should still take the pandemic very seriously, acting as if everyone has it, and always wear a mask in public places. They are on the front lines in the war against COVID-19, and while they protect themselves from the deadly virus, their skin sometimes takes a beating. A local skincare expert wants to do something about that. Zonda Barnes says she has just what they need. The NFL draft was held Thursday night. LSU Joe Burrow, of course, the first pick overall, taken by the Cincinnati Bengals. He tweeted this morning, enough talk, let's get to work. That is awesome, Andre. What a way to give back. <laughs> That's amazing. Today, we are proud to announce the six high school students being recognized by LPB as this year's Louisiana Young Heroes. Now in its 25th year, LPB's Young Heroes program celebrates the achievements of students who've inspired those around them and have devoted their time, talents, and energy to making their communities better places. When the doors to the Louisiana legislature swung open on Monday and lawmakers packed in, State Representative Edward Ted James was not among them. The 38-year-old who was hospitalized last month with coronavirus and pneumonia said Says he didn't feel comfortable going. He says some of the same lawmakers who are telling residents to stay home and social distance weren't even wearing masks. Legislative leaders say they've taken steps to prevent the spread of the coronavirus, like temperature checks at the Capitol door and plexiglass dividers between the desks on the House floor. The regular session ends June 1st, and lawmakers have until July 1st to pass a budget time to settle into his new job representing the state's 38th district. Shortly after being named chair of the Homeland Security Committee, he was tasked with handling a pandemic and a few months later, two devastating hurricanes. We talked with Sarah Capel, who had to evacuate again and didn't know what to expect when she got back to town. Sarah says another issue is dealing with insurance companies which are swamped and she says those companies will likely determine how quickly many homeowners and businesses can start rebuilding their lives again. This week, Louisiana Public Square aired a special edition of its series, Pulse of a Pandemic, to give the status of the COVID-19 crisis as it continues to affect residents of the state. She's the Zachary Elementary School Student of the Year, and she's not only at selling at her school, but also in her community. 10-year-old Mackenzie Barrow saw a need, and with the help of her mom, pulled out her sewing machine and started making much needed PPE. Mackenzie, it looks like you have like a little factory behind you, a mask factory, is that about right? Sort of, kind of. It didn't take very long in our conversation to realize 10-year-old Mackenzie Barrow, a straight-A student, is not only bright, but thoughtful, too. It was like starting to spread a lot in Louisiana, and then I noticed that a lot, um, it was having sort shortages with masks, so I decided that I should start making some since I know how to do, um, like, sewing, so I could make some for the first responders. The Zachary Elementary Student of the Year is no stranger to giving back to her community. And when she saw the news about COVID-19, she hatched a plan with a little help from her mom to give back again in a potentially life-saving way. We already had like um, about all the supplies that we needed. Uh -huh. We just had to figure out, like have to figure out a pattern to use. Once we figured that out, we used um, my mom's embroidery machine to make the mask. How long does it take you to make a mask? Um, a little bit over 15 minutes. You can make a mask every 15 minutes? Two masks every 15 minutes. Wow. So what have you learned since doing this? I mean, you've already obviously known how to sew, but what have you learned in doing this? Well, I had to first learn how to make a used embroidery machine, so my mom taught me. And then also I learned how to do, like, cutting them out and ironing and all this different stuff you have to do to like make the mask. But the active fourth grader who juggles church activities, soccer, orchestra, Spanish club, and community theater, just to name a few of her many activities, is using this downtime of sorts to help at a time when help is very needed, making dozens of masks for Lane Regional Medical Center in Zachary. I know it's over a hundred. You've over a hundred masks? Yes, ma'am. And are you still making the mask? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what's the fun part about this for you? I mean, it may seem like work, but what's the really fun part for you? The fun part is that I get to help out with the community. Then I also get to learn new stuff and I get to spend time with my mom. Mackenzie, thank you so much. And uh, hey, thanks for being a great little citizen and doing so much to help the community. I can't wait to tell your story. Okay, thank you. 
Now, the first batch of 50 masks that McKinsey made were given to nurse, doctors, and other medical workers at Lane Medical Center in Zachary. And as you can imagine, they went like hotcakes. She says, of course, there's lots of requests for Saint Mask as well as LSU Mask. Yeah, McKinsey, you are fantastic. <laughs> She's something else, huh? Yes. He had worked out and felt totally normal on the Sunday before his life got turned upside down. State Representative Ted James says days later he was fighting to stay alive, and he told me at one point he wanted to give up. This is how residents across the state are used to seeing Representative Ted James on the floor of the House building relationships, writing laws, helping to improve the lives of Louisianans. But this is how he spent several days this month hospitalized, fighting to survive, machines helping him breathe, pneumonia filling his lungs, a victim of the coronavirus. This, uh, you know, bout with COVID-19 was um, certainly the, the toughest fight that I've had to undergo with the uh, not just the, um, the, the medical piece and the physical piece, but also um, the mental aspects and, um, and, and just the, the fear of the unknown. I read that you really felt like this was it. You felt like this was over. You felt like you were gonna die. I did. Um, and I, I felt like, I think most, I'm not gonna say most importantly, but um, at times I felt like I didn't want to, to fight at all. Um, and uh, with this virus, all the medical professionals say that this is not one that you uh, just kind of sit and, and rest and let it, you, you have to, you have to fight, you have to, um, you know, of course, take your medicine, but you also have to do your breathing exercises, you have to, you have to eat, right, you have to um, drink a lot of fluids, you, you have to, uh, you know, not just, they kept telling me you can't stay in the bed all day, you can't stay in the bed all day. Uh, and you know, for, for the first couple of days, I, I, I did, I didn't listen. I, I didn't want to hear it. Um, and you know, I felt so weak that I, I didn't want to fight back. I understand that the day before you realized anything was going on, that you went for a run, you did your normal routine and then just all of a sudden, right? Yeah. I, um, uh, I mean, I even did one of those, you know, push up challenges online with some of my frat brothers that sent me a challenge. Uh, so I was out at the lakes, uh, you know, ran a, a few miles uh, that, that Sunday, I, um, uh, just a regular day. But it was within hours the symptoms of COVID-19 came on strong. James says he sweated through a couple of shirts and woke up with a fever of 102 degrees. The next few days were bearable, but by week's end, it was no denying he was getting weaker and very sick. I didn't really start having trouble breathing until probably that Friday. Um, and, and then Saturday, I had um, a friend of mine, um, my, my, my former legislative aide, actually, she brought uh, some groceries and some food. And from my, my couch to my door, maybe five feet. Um, and I, at, at that point, I couldn't. Like, people have been dropping off stuff all week. Um, you know, my, my friends were bringing food over. People were bringing groceries. Um, and that day, I can remember she brought some canes. She brought some um, Jason's Deli and some other groceries. And a lot of those bags remained on the floor until I was in the hospital. And, and I had friends come to my house to you know, grab some clothes and kind of clean up. So a lot of the stuff never made it inside uh, fully into the house because I just didn't have the energy to pick it up. Just completely wiped out. Um, at, at times when I was really having difficulty, I, I've told friends it's almost like going going for a sprint, stopping, and then expect it to just bounce right back. And it, it just felt like, you know, a constant um, search for breath. Realizing he needed medical help immediately, he drove himself to the hospital. And for the next several days, he battled to survive, to even take a breath. Then it was just like a, a constant focus on taking, like, as, a, as deep of a breath as I could. So you had to focus to even breathe. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it was hard to do it. It was hard for you to focus to even breathe. Almost definitely. Um, you know, just a lot, a lot of it, uh, of course, was fear. Um, at the time, I'm still watching the news. I'm reading every article. So basically, you credit your nurses and the hospital people for helping you get back and engage? 100%. Um, they, you know, went above and beyond. Uh, you know, I tell people about yeah, this this nurse Quincy. Uh, I, I can't wait for all of this to slow down uh, because I, I I have you know I definitely have to have a conversation with them. 
Um, and it's, it's going to go further than sending lunch. Like, you know, I, I owe a lot to, um, you know, Quincy and then my, my, he was the night nurse. Stephanie was my day nurse. James says for those thinking, I'm healthy, I'm young, and I won't get it, think again. He's in his 30s with no underlying health issues. He says anybody can fall victim. I was in the hospital with a very close friend of mine. Um, somebody, he, he's my age, has a young family, and we're both in there, you know, fighting for our lives at 38. Um, so, you know, number one for, for folks in our generation, um, take the, the social distancing guidelines very, very seriously. In keeping with the strong stance on helping to flatten the curve, Representative James told me if the legislative session opened tomorrow, he's not sure he'd be willing to go to the Capitol right now because of his concerns about the virus.